And I just want to spend a few minutes talking about um, the concept and the implications of leapfrogging. Uh, so it's often talked about that in uh, emerging markets have leapfrogged where mobile services have effectively leapfrogged, leapfrogged fixed services and you have a lot more mobiles um, than fixed in, in emerging countries and that's because it costs much less to deploy mobile networks, uh, it's easier to get competition going and let's face it, uh, you know, the demand is much stronger for a mobile phone that you can personalize and take with you. Um, so that's all, all good and well known, but uh, I think the same is true for services, um, that you can have leapfrogging for services. And one of the best known examples is uh, M-Pesa in mobile money um, now has uh, 14 million subscribers in Kenya, representing 73% of all adults. So clearly, in terms of mobile access to money, Kenya has leapfrogged all developed countries. Um, and the reason for that is, is similar, in a sense, to the, to the mobile leapfrogging, that you just have um, people who don't have access to banks, to ATMs, to credit cards, and so it's a very low cost and efficient way to, to provide uh, banking services to, to people. Um, and so this ability to leapfrog, not just in the, the access, but in the services, has two uh, strong implications. One of those is um, that there's a strong possibility for innovation, for economic uh, transformation in these services, that services like M-Pesa can be developed and start to be exported, and that's certainly the case with M-Pesa that's being rolled out around Africa. Um, another nice uh, example um, that I like is uh, a, serv a service called uh, Ushahidi that developed in Kenya after the, um, uh, there was some uh, violence after elections in 2007. So they developed this application to track violence throughout the country using crowdsourcing and, and mobile maps. Um, and that's started to be exported around the world where there's earthquakes or other disasters. And even in Washington, D.C., the, the Washington Post used it to track the snow plows after, after a big snowfall in, in 2010. Um, and uh, I didn't know about it at the time, but it, in, if you live in Washington, you need to know where, the, where, the, where it's been plowed because it, the, the snow plows can be quite slow. Um, so that's a nice example of of an innovative service that was created for one need but started to be exported. Um, but the, the other implication of this leapfrogging is um, that a mobile phone and access to the internet is even more valuable in emerging countries than they are here uh, in the developed world where we have access to banking, we have access to fixed phones, we have access to a lot of sources of information. Farmers can get access to farm, to crop prices here without going to the internet. Um, so, you know, these phones have even more uh, benefit, mobile and, and the web has even more benefit in these uh, emerging countries. And so that really leads to, to what I'd like to add to this panel is to talk about the need for infrastructure because at the end of the day you can't leapfrog the need for infrastructure to get mobile phones to people. Um, to get access to people, and I'd, in a few minutes after this, I'd like to talk about a report that I've just done for the Internet Society on a particular piece of the, in, of the infrastructure called the Internet Exchange Points. But just in terms of economic transformation, I'd just like to close with one other story that I always think about, and um, this is, a, again, around 2007 in Kenya when the iPhone came out. Um, somebody... Uh, you know, a guy there, a young man there, downloaded uh, the software developer kit, created an application for the iPhone, put it, on the, put it on the market and started to sell it. Nothing special except for the fact that he'd never seen or touched an iPhone. Um, and so you imagine the drive and the imagination to create an app, put it on the web, having never tried an iPhone, having never tested it on an iPhone. And I think that, for me, the economic transformation is making sure that guy has an iPhone, making sure he has the tools to be able to compete, and then letting him get onto the world market just like everybody else.